Hello mathematicians, thank you for joining me for some counting today. And so what we're going to do is we're going to be pulling some markers and pens out of bag. And I want to know how many ways I can do that in different situations. So the first situation we're going to have is, I'm going to suppose that each one of these is distinct. I'm not sure I could tell the difference between each of them, but I'm going to suppose that I could. And so the idea is I'm going to reach in and I'm going to grab one of these at random and I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to get this black pen. All right, so I had a, this black pen, so I'm just going to say, okay, my black pen was my first option. Then I'm going to put it back in here, and I'm going to shake it all up, and I'm going to pick another one, and then I got a different black pen, so I'm going to call that black pen too. And I believe this one looks different, so we'll shake it up again. And for the third choice, we'll get a purple marker. And I'm total, I'm going to do this seven times. So let's see. I'll put it back in and get a black marker, a, another black marker. We'll pretend it's the same one. I'm not sure if it was or not. So we'll say both black marker one. And then a red marker. And then. I'm going to get a blue marker. We say B L E marker. All right. So I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different markers or pens out of my bag, and this was the case that I got this time. I wrote it down, and that's what I got. Now, what I want to know is instead of just what is one option, what how many total options are there going to be? for doing such an experiment. That is, if I did this over and over again, and I kept getting different and different options, what is the, how many different options can I get? Well, as I'm doing this, what I want to think about is, well, how many choices am I making? And each time I make a choice, what types of things can happen? And so if I look at this one, notice that I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different options along the way. I'm going to reach in and pick up out a marker or a pen seven total times. Now, when I picked out this first marker, notice that I had 30 markers or pens in there, and each one was distinguishable, so what I would notice is that there were 30 options available. Now, I then took this and put it back in, so how many did I get here is, now I'm still gonna have 30 options available, and notice that because I keep putting these in, I get 30 options for each one of these. And so the idea is that I have 30 options here and 30 options here and 30 options here. So if I use the multiplication principle, the total number of options is going to be 30 times 30 times 30 times 30 times 30 times 30 times 30. Or I'm going to get that the total number of options is going to be 30 to the 7. Now, if we take a step back and think about this in the context of all of my different options here, is what's happening is I'm running the same experiment seven times. Now, is repetition allowed? Notice that I did get the same black marker twice, so it is possible to repeat because I'm putting the marker or pen back into the bag every time I pull out. So what we get here was repetition was allowed in my choices. Furthermore, did the order matter is if I got the black pen, the second black pen than the first black pen, notice that would be a different option than if I got the first than the second. So what I want to notice here is that the order does actually matter. So if I have repetition allowed in order mattering, what I end up is in this case, well, I have 30 options each time. I'm going to run this seven times. So the total number of options is going to be 30 to the 7th. Or in general, if I'm going to run the experiment k times with n options, I'm going to end up with a total of n to the k options. Let's go ahead and run that experiment again. Except for this time, when we pull something out, we're going to leave it out. So I'm going to pull out this pen, which is a blue pen. I'm going to put it over here and leave it on my thing so that I know that I've already pulled that one. 
I'm going to go in again and say, okay, here's a different blue pen. Here is a red pen. Here is, I got two, so I'll try again. A black marker. Now everything's falling all over. Oh my goodness. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, a green marker. Uh, black Sharpie. Uh, black marker. Man, I'm at seven now. All right, good. So I got this particular blue pen, then this blue pen, then this red pen. The pens weren't standing up very well, but there we go. And then we got the black marker, the green marker, the black Sharpie, and then a different black marker. And so what I want to know is if I run this experiment over and over again, how many total options will I have for pulling these things out? Well, like we did last time, we're going to count again and say, well, in each of these cases, what's happening is I'm running this experiment seven times, and I'm pulling out seven times. Now, I'm going to go right to, do, does order matter and is repetition allowed? And notice that this time with repetition, because I pulled them out and put them off to the side, I couldn't repeat the same pen or the same marker twice. So what I have is there is no repetition. Now, did the order matter? Well, if we look at, we have this blue pen and this blue pen, notice that that was distinctly different than if I had switched these two, that would give me a different outcome. So because of that, order is going to matter, so I'm going to have no repetition order matters. So if I'm running the same experiment seven times, I have no repetition order matters, what I get here is that the total number of ways to do this will be a permutation. So no repetition order matters is a permutation, and I'm doing it seven times, So and I have 30 options to choose from because there are 30 markers or pens. So I'm going to get a permutation of I have 30 objects. I'm going to choose seven at a time. So all right, now we're going to pull pens and markers out of our bag again. But this time, instead of pulling one out at a time, I'm just going to reach in and grab seven. So four, five, six, seven. All right. So here are my seven things. If you can see all those. And what I get is, that is my option. That's what I end up with. Now, how many total different ways can I pull out seven objects from this 30 is, well, again, I'm going to go through the process I did last time is, I'm pulling out seven items. So I'm going to pull out seven times. And I'm going to have 30 options to choose from. Now, if I look at repetition in order, notice that first off, can I have picked this pen that fell out of my hand twice? Well, no, I couldn't have. Why not? Because if I pulled it, I couldn't pull it again. So therefore, there is no repetition in this option. So when I'm doing this seven times, I have no repetition. But does order matter is notice that I pulled out all seven at the time. So if I switch these two, would that end up switching the option that I had was, well, I have no idea which one I pulled out first, second, third, or fourth. So if I start changing the order, this indeed is still the same option. So in this case, my order does not matter. So if I have no repetition and order does not matter, what we would call, say is that this is a combination. And so indeed I'll have a combination of 30 objects, seven at a time. So the total number of ways I can do that is just 30 choose seven. All right, now the next time we run this, let's just suppose that I have only markers in here. I don't have 30 markers, but let's suppose I were. And I reached in and I grabbed seven. I pulled out these seven and I put them up on the board. I put, pulled them all out at a time. So I get something that looks like this. And so what I get is different markers. Now, in this case, what I'm going to claim is that I have black markers, green markers, and blue markers. So, I can't tell the difference between those. I can't tell the difference between this one and this one, or this one and this one, because if they're the same color, they look exactly the same to me. 
what I want to know in this case is how many total options are there going to be. And so let's think about that. Well, as I look at this, notice that since I pulled all seven out at a time, notice that the order doesn't matter at all. So if I switch these two, it's still the same option. I still have the same number of greens and blacks and blues. So the order would not matter. And also notice that I have multiple blue markers, multiple black markers. So repetition is indeed allowed in this case. So repetition is allowed and order does not matter. So in this case, how am I going to count the total number of options? Well, what I have to do is get a little tricky with this and realize, okay, well, order does not matter. Repetition is allowed. And so I want to think, well, I can rearrange these so that I can put all the greens first and then I can put the black second and then the blues at the end. So I'm going to get something like this. Green, green, black, 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 blue, blue. And so the idea is that in order to count them, I'm going to put them in this standard form of greens, then blacks, then blues. So that way, to count, I'm going to say it's going to be the same choice if I have the same number of greens, same number of blacks, and same number of blues. Now what happens is, is that since what's really happening here is I really only have three choices. I have green, black, and blue. So I'm going to say that there are three options. And I'm going to pick this seven times with each of those three options being allowed to repeat. So now as I'm trying to count this, what we called this in class was a multi-set. So the number of multi-sets was well, in order to determine an option, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven markers. And so I'm going to draw in some bars in here. And if I draw a bar here and a bar here, then what this means is I have three green, one black, and three blue. If I change it up and draw a bar like that, I have zero green, four black, and three blue. So I can completely determine my outcome based on where I draw these two bars. Notice then that since I'm doing this seven times and I have three options, I only need two bars, but I have seven spots for markers, two spots for bars, so I end up having a total of nine spots, and I have to fill two of them with the bars to determine my outcome. So my total number of options is going to be nine choose two, which is nine factorial over 9 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. And so that would be the number of ways to do it in this case. Now remember, in general, if I have n options, and I'm going to do this k times, what I will get is that the total number of ways to get a multi-set is going to be k, is the number of times I ran it, plus n minus 1, because that's how many bars I had, and I'm going to pick the total number of bars where they go. So the total number of options is going to be k plus n minus 1 over n, or choose n minus 1. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel.